I'm sure by now you've heard of tracking macros and that it's pretty much the gold standard for being able to lose weight. But have you ever wondered how are you supposed to even know if you're on the right macros or when do you actually adjust your macros if you're in the weight loss process? Well, I'm here today to demystify some of those common questions and concern I know many of you are thinking, so it's going to be a good one. Grab your coffee and let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode. And we are back. Candidly with coffee. Happy Friday. Let's go. Yep. Don't be still on my line. <laughs> Maybe if you guys are following us over on Instagram, candidly underscore with coffee, then you've already seen the video, but it was quite popular on our Instagram this week. I shared a video where I was teaching Mike a few a couple weeks ago, how to do text or no voice to text on his iPhone. And he was struggling with the process and I recorded him and it was pretty comical. I wanted to throw the goddamn phone through the wall to be <laughs> honest with you. It was so funny. But see, you guys, you have to be following us over on our <laughs> candidly underscore with coffee Instagram because there's exclusive content over there that never makes it to the podcast. And you are missing out because let me tell you, when I tell you I got about 100 DMs of people that said they were literally cackling over that. Cackling, huh? I'm saving it in my phone because I actually want to play it on days that I'm feeling a little sad. Damn. So I amuse you're saying, huh? You do. You're easy. And a lot of people said what a good sport you were because you are, though, you are a good sport when it comes to being able to make fun of yourself. I a can little laugh bit. at myself. You can laugh at yourself. Yeah, it's funny now. I look back at it. I was just getting frustrated because, you know, let me explain some of you people so you understand the way my brain works because people don't understand. I have ADHD. So sometimes I get impatient and I start getting furious fast. I, I'm just like my mother. My mother was very impatient. She had zero patience. Yeah. So, and, and when you get frustrated, then you try, like, you press a lot of buttons and you do things more rapidly and makes it worse. And I want to crush that phone, to be honest with you. That's what I really wanted to do, if the, I'm being honest. The funniest part was every time he was screaming up here at the phone. I didn't and know. And the speaker is down here. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm getting better. I always tell you, be patient. I get better at things. No, you're very smart. It's never about your intelligence. It's always about my patience. Your patience. I have yeah, very low patience. I, yeah. I envy people who are like your son, very patient. Oh, I am yeah. not. I'm just I, like my mother. I'm not patient. Listen, I'm not patient either, though. But yeah. you are less patient than yes. I am. I have a short fuse and very not patient. That's true. I do want to remind you guys, if you have not already signed up for my newsletter, Monday is a new issue of the newsletter. And to sign up, you just click on the link down in the description, and that's going to take you to my little mini website. If you scroll to where it says Macro Friendly Recipes Newsletter and drop your email there, you will get the last version instantly, and then the new newsletter comes out Monday. You don't want to miss it. I put some good recipes and stuff that I don't share anywhere else in that newsletter. I don't spam. I just send a newsletter out every couple of weeks. And this newsletter will also include the information for my Black Friday special. And just so you guys know, I'm not gatekeeping the sale. I'm only going to have a sale on my Jay's Body Bootcamp, which is my online subscription service. You get your workouts, you get your meal plan, you have a client only access email address where you can get help and troubleshooting and things like that with your macros. That program is my most cost effective program, and it's going to be the lowest price it's ever been, I believe, for uh, Black Friday. And that price is what you lock in that price for the duration of your transformation. So if you stay with me for three months, six months, you get that low price. Got to jump on it's it. It's a monthly price. So that is going to be exclusively revealed in the newsletter. I'm not discounting one-on-one -on -one coaching. So don't wait for that because it's not happening. No I don't even have a lot of slots for that as it is. I only open up a couple here and there. And macro assessments, I'm not discounting as well. Because I can't, I just can't make them any less than they are just because how no. much time I put on those. You get a detailed assessment. You don't just get numbers. 
you get a, a packet that says information on based on what information you asked in your intake. If you have specific questions or concerns, I really do take my time on those. So I'm not discounting them. I just I'm not. Nah, in fact, man. the People, prices probably are going to go up in 2024. Yep. Yep, people got to invest in themselves. They invest yeah. in everything else in life, but they're so scared to spend money on themselves. Nah, you better change that mindset real quick. But I'm happy. I'm excited to work with you. I am always adding things to my programs, both the Body Boot Camp, which is very cost effective for what you get, guys, honestly. And for my one on one macro coaching, I'm constantly making it better and better. And I, I've, I have one of my clients just finished up her first month with me. She lost. What did I say she lost? 14 pounds? Yeah, she's killing 14 it. 14 pounds in four weeks. She killed it. That's and at the beginning, she was not eating enough protein. And you're probably listening, so hello. I don't want to, I'm not going to blast your name because it's private unless you want to share that kind of thing publicly. Yeah. But I'm proud of you if you're listening because you killed it. And she was not hitting her protein goals. And I, she, I asked her to bump up her protein. She did what I asked. She's looking great. It's crazy. Even men, my guys have a hard time hitting protein goals. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Even me, I used to think I ate enough protein and not really. Now when you really pay attention on your tracking, then you're like, wow, I'm way low. Yeah, I recently um, bumped up my own protein. I'm aiming for 130 grams plus. And um, it's not hard if you plan for it. No, not you at just all. just plan for you it. You got to have a game plan. You, you can't cross your fingers and hope you're going to have enough calories to reach your protein goal. Because what will happen is you won't hit your protein goal. And you'll run out of calories. Yep. So exactly. Can't do it. You want to give Don't us guess. a sobriety update? It's November 16th. So what is that? 16? 16 days sober from the weed, man, from California sober. So how many people did we trigger about the California sober, by the way, from the video? A lot. People have a hard time admitting to themselves, like, things are addictive. Yeah. And with weed, too. Weed is, they think it's like a cup of coffee. Dude, no, it's not. It's addictive. So let me tell you guys something. Three things that I suffer from. Addiction from my grandfather I inherited. Mental health from my mother. And I'm an extreme person. Those three combinations are no bueno for a person like me to smoke weed. It's yeah, just not. so you have to think, is this conducive to... My mental health. For you. No, no, it's not. Negative, it's not. Yeah, Facts. we touched on that a little bit last yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but the reality of your withdrawals was cold sweats, anxiety, poor sleep, mood swings. Yes. And that... Mm -hmm persisted for two solid weeks yes getting a little better now i'm coming out of it now but still Less sweats still there though it's still there still coming out of it bro. but yeah i'm still there you know what's interesting oh, I oh hold on you missed something crazy dreams oh, excuse yeah, my friends crazy ass dreams i never dreamt before crazy dreams they feel so dreams. real some are huh? well you know what i was going to tell you and goes into this quote that I was going to give you. I was on um, Instagram. I follow Chris Bumstead on Instagram. He's a, a IFBB pro bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And he had a quote on Instagram. It says, when you numb the bad, you numb the good. Oh, I like but that. But substances, hall, weed, any, any type of substances, Xanax, it yep. numbs everything. Yes. So what happens is, and why it's very precarious when you come off of substances that numb things is, yeah... It's, it's now you're feeling the feelings you were numbing, the good and the bad, you now feel again. Yeah. And sometimes that's very difficult to suddenly yeah. feel what you didn't realize you've been numbing. So maybe you didn't, you stopped drinking alcohol, you stopped the Xanax, but yeah. you searched for the numbing yep. with another substance. I did. And now you're not numb and you're starting to dream and then you have anxiety yeah. and you're, you're feeling I think people don't realize that your body will always claim the feeling at some point. You cannot bypass feelings. You have to go through them, through grief. Yep, you do. Anger. Yep. Like you have to sit in the feelings. If you go through a breakup, it's going to be sad. You're yes. going to be all the feelings of the relationship and all of that. But if you don't sit in it and feel it, eventually you will. Yep. It'll come back to get you. So if you try to numb, it's just going to prolong it. So anything that you numbed is going to come to the surface once you stop numbing it. Like you said, you got to go through the grief, even through death. A lot of mm -hmm. people try to numb death, like losing a loved one or a parent and try to drink their way through or pop pills. I know. Can't do that. No. To hide their grief. No, I'm glad I didn't. I really didn't. I didn't do that when my mom died. I really no. like sat in my sadness a lot of times. I allowed myself to cry, purposely pulled up pictures. I wanted to feel yes. it. I still allow myself to feel it. So let me explain what happened to me. Two, what was it, two weeks ago? Remember I told you on a Sunday and you were tripping because you, you never seen me like that. I think you only see me after my mother died. Was, 
I woke up hella emotional and crying. This was like the first weekend that I gave up weed. And I was super emotional. I was thinking about my mother. What do you think that was? And how I let her down and how she tried to protect me as a kid from these vices and addiction because she knew it ran in our bloodline. She knew the curse was there. So what happened, though, is you were clean finally, literally, of all substances for once in years. And what happened? You felt Yes, you're right. The numbness went away. And That's then you crazy. had to go through way. the feelings. Yeah, yeah. And I was like that, very emotional. I was crying for a few days, actually. Yeah, Every time you, I looked at her picture yeah, with her were, visiting me in prison, I said, Bawling. Ball. Not tears, no. you guys. Bawling. Yeah. Because you were feeling. You have to look at it like when I found you like that, I told you this is a good thing. Yeah, it's hard. You need to let it happen. Don't bottle it up. You got to let it out. That's why a lot of men struggle more so with mental health because yes. society teaches them that they're not supposed to feel and be emotional yep. and have cry and things like that. So they bottle it up and they yep. burst. Yep, especially in my culture, Latino culture. We're, we're taught as men not supposed to cry, supposed to tough it out. So I try to hold it in and I couldn't. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's a good thing, but that's, it goes to that quote. And I, I love that quote. When you numb the bad, you numb the good. It really stuck yeah. with me. And wow. it's so true. Speaking of death and grief, Jennifer Aniston, actually all of the cast of Friends finally just posted their tributes to Matthew Perry. I never cried so fast when I read a, a tribute. It was, she shared like a text with him. I'll put it up on the screen because she shared a photo of like their very first photo together. They were reading the script for Friends at the very beginning. And she shared a text with him where it he sent her that picture and it said he said making you laugh just made my day it made my day and she said oh the first of thousands of times damn she said this one's it cuts I deep bet. It's very hard. deep yes of course and i w- it was just it was so sad and moving reading all of their tributes but i p to matthew perry man that one's still i don't know if i can watch friends for a while that one's tough for me it's just so sad tragic wow tragic that's insane all right you guys hot coffee topic i don't know if you've heard this because it's in sports but i was shocked there's this guy adam johnson he was in in a hockey game this gotta be a worst nightmare of a hockey player he was severed his neck was severed by a hockey skate he died i heard about that i did hear about that so i heard about that and i thought oh my god that's a tragic freak accident and then I read this man arrested on suspicion of manslaughter after ice hockey player's death. They arrested the guy whose blade hit him is arrested. That's if you're in a boxing ring and you're beating your opponent and his hands are down. He's about to go out, but you give him the final blow. Then he dies in the ring. You should, that's part of the game. It can so happen. I don't know if there's no, I couldn't get any further details. So I'm so interested. I wonder, is it because he did something illegal? So in basketball, if you do, you commit a foul, say yes. you commit a foul. And in the process of that foul, an illegal move, fl- like even a, a flagrant, flagrant yeah, yeah. if you commit a flagrant foul that results in the death of a player, would that be manslaughter? Probably. If he, if he went up like to dunk and you went under his legs yeah. and then you made him, Fall Come and hit fall, his head or something. And then hit his head or snap mm-hmm. his neck. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. It's never happened in sports, but can it? Because that's it all I can think flagrant? about. That it, it was it in the com, in the process of the commission of a flagrant foul. I don't know. And there's very little information released. They didn't even release officially the name of the player that was arrested because in I guess it happened in England. And in England, wow. they the person is protected. Their identity is protected unless they're officially charged. And he was arrested, but not officially charged as of as of the time that I read this. But I couldn't find any other information. But nah, I was if the player fell up to the ice, and the dude's coming out with the skates, and he's purposely aiming that that skate at to his neck yeah, or something. Then I maybe, and if they have it on camera, it's possible. Because they get. But see, here's the thing. I wonder if this is going to change the whole course of the sport of hockey. Because hockey is a known to be a very violent sport. Yes, they it fight is. all the time. Yes, they literally. Th- I, that's the only one of the reasons I wanted to go watch Remember? it with you. We went. Yeah. I said, "When are they going to fight? Throw the gloves on to circle each other." But you they know. didn't fight that game. No, though. they didn't. I was upset. Yeah, but I'm crazy. I like violence. What can I say? Oh my god! All right, you guys, hold my coffee. <laughs> hold my coffee goes to anyone that doesn't even have the respect to formulate a proper question. When they're trying to post their assumptions, it really irks me. I'm sorry. The F-bomb had to be dropped. I'm going to have to bleep it. 
Oh, well, has to be drops and said sometimes. It's annoying. And let me explain what I'm talking about. Like when someone like on my post, sometimes they'll put plastic surgery question mark. Or yeah, what do you want to know? Tummy tuck question mark. It's it there to me. It's an assumption with a question mark, like trying to ask, but not really wanting an answer. They're already assuming the answer. Yes. Yes. And they're like, trying to blast you in front of everybody. Let's, yes. let's be honest. That's what they're trying to do. Make themselves throw a dig at you to try to make you look bad and themselves look good or get some kind of response. It is so irritating to me. Like the latest for you is what? Oh, yeah. Somebody said TRT. Question mark. Question mark. TRT. Question mark. Or I see it a lot yeah. on anyone that comes up with anyone that shows some weight loss. Someone will say Ozempic question mark. <laughs> It's irritating. These people are too much out there in the social media world, man. They're hilarious. Let me tell you this regarding HRT, TRT. Yeah. Because that's what we're going to get. Now, all of a yep. sudden, if I, you know, I'm continuing to work on my body and I'm, I'm making gains and all of that. It's a slow process, but it is what it is. Yeah. So when I, you know, start to make some serious progress, someone is going to try to deflate my bubble and act like it's only because I took HRT. Right. When I know many people that are on TRT, HRT, that are not fitness physiques. It does not guarantee you a fitness physique. Nope. Let me tell <laughs> you, you something. It, it. it doesn't get, get us up at 4 or 5 in the morning. It doesn't get us in the gym by 6, 6.30. It doesn't stop the fork from coming to the mouth and overeating. It does none of that. It doesn't lift the weights for you. It doesn't get the steps in for you. So all these assumptions are blatantly ignorant. That's what people are. They just want to feel good. They want to throw a dig. But because they're insecure about themselves... They want to throw a dig at us to make themselves look good. But guess what? It doesn't phase us. No, I mean, the truth is it's a reflection of how the insecurities they're feeling. Yes. But I won't even... Listen, if someone asks, poses a question that's, uh, you know, private or whatever, and they ask it in a respectful way, I will answer the question. I get that a lot. Oh, my gosh, you ha- your hair is beautiful, but do you mind me asking, is it hair extensions? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's hair extensions. I get this type. This is the the length. This is the method I put in. I, I share. But if someone's like, extensions, question mark. What about you don't get the fake boobs, question mark? Not really, but I do get that a lot of people assume tummy tuck because I have a large tattoo on my stomach. And if someone said, hey, do you mind me asking, why did you get that tattoo? Or did you, were, did you have a tummy tuck after your weight loss? Did you have a lot of loose skin? I answer that question all day long. Someone says tummy tuck question mark, and I give them the big middle finger emoji. Yep. I've never had a tummy tuck, but I. Nope. that's not why I got the tattoo. I actually got it to cover stretch marks. I have a shit ton of stretch marks. There and I just did, I like, I have tattoos all over my body, so why not slap a tattoo there? I'd rather look at that than the stretch marks. There you go, people. That's it. There's your answer. But a lot of times it's rude assumptions that they, that are meant to deflate you. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't phase us. That's the beauty. And I always say this on my Instagram lives or even when I'm posting, like, listen, I'm going to be 49 in January. I give two shits about what people think or opinions. That's the beauty of getting older. When you're younger, you're worried about your image. Well, he upset. I don't give a damn, period. End of story. That's the beauty. Yeah, I can tell you this. I still have not found the I, the thing that would be the magic that will do all of this for me without putting in the hard work. Yes. HRT isn't it either. No. I'm, I'm in the process. I'm actually getting ready to film episode two, and I've had some interesting revelations, and I think I can help people on their journey. Things I wish I would have known. Yep. I'm in the process. I'm in the thick of it. I'm only two weeks in. You're not going to see... You're going to probably get the negative side effects before you get the positive ones. That's for sure. Because it doesn't, it's not overnight. You got to be patient. Yes. Just like, just, you got to trust the process. That mm-hmm. same, go back to the same word. I know it sounds the same thing over and over. What do you call it? Repetitive, but you got to trust the process. Yeah. I just actually did a post saying, because I showed my progress. It's like a, there was three months between photos. You could see some progress. It's not like jaw dropping, but it's progress. And it, this is realistic progress. There's a doctor, I don't remember his name. So I'll I put it up on the screen, it. by the way. And he said this. He said you didn't put that goddamn weight on overnight. You put it on over time, months, years. Mm-hmm. What do you think you're going to just take the layers off in a month? People think right. they're going to get on a macro program. All of a sudden, 10 pounds is going to come off in the first week. No, no, people. That's not how it works. You packed on that fat over years. It's going to take a minute to get off mm-hmm. you. Trust the process. Mm-hmm. You got to put your head down and do the work. Time's going to pass anyway kind of thing. Exactly. And know that eventually when you pick your head up, and you try to look for results, if you wait long enough, you're going to see them and you're going to be like, take a sigh of breath of fresh air. Like, oh, okay, it's working. Like with me, that 
I didn't dwell on, I didn't take progress pics every week and look for every little change. And I'm glad I didn't because it's so minimal, like one paper towel at a time, literally. Yeah. But when I you took a video of me doing my low back row, yes. and I ha I happen to have a video from about three months ago doing the same thing, and I'm like, I want to see if I'm going to be able to see fat loss because there is about 10 pounds difference in this picture. 10 pounds over your entire body is not that much. It's not going to show like jaw-dropping change, but I definitely see it. I'm leaner. My back is leaner. Like I see more yep. muscle tone in my back. But again, it there's a lot of there's a lot of workouts early mornings, yeah, and um, steps, steps, and lifts in that in between those two pictures. But Instagram and a lot of times in social media makes it look like transformations are overnight. Yes, and a lot of people edit those wow factor transformations. Yes, they do. I'm sorry, but most of the things on the internet, it's bullshit. And if you don't believe yes. me, follow at goob g o b dash you too i'll put his information here yes he busts influence he calls them shit fluencers yes influencers that sell programs that edit their clients progress pictures their own progress pictures he busts them left and right because the internet is flooded with them it's it's just and then but see someone like me who posts <laughs> progress like mine Ooh, sorry yeah. guys but this is the what it really this is, is reality progress. yeah fake versus reality that's it people, yeah and the want smaller instant. you are the more minute those progress pictures become like for me it's minute change i'm like ooh, there's a little striation right here Tiny in the little. upper right hand that's not showing in here yeah now when you have clients that are a little larger to begin with it, it's more obvious of course. when they start to lose of course they have a bigger frame bigger vessel but yeah anyways there, there. Follow goes that, that page though. He is hilarious. Yeah, follow that. And page. they come for him too, and he bust them right back out when they try to come for him. It's and they hilarious. edit their photos a lot, a lot. They're always the curves in the background yes. and all of that. And they're like, look at my progress. The worst to me, Sink the it, worst, snatching in their waist. That's the most common one. They were snatching their waist. But the worst is when they edit client transformation photos because oh. to me that's so devastating, even for the client. Yeah, yeah, that's horrible. You should never do that. Like, really? Now like you're using your client for business and you're editing their photos and you're giving them like false hope. They really think they look like that when they don't. Come on, man. That's and terrible. And he's thorough, by the way. He's very thorough. He's a smart dude right there. Yeah, it's thorough. not if you do it one time, he'll let it pass usually. But if he finds one, there's... I mean, he went after Sofia Vergara. He caught her editing some photos. She's a celebrity. He, he put a poll. Should I go after celebrities? Everybody's like, yes, they're fair game too. Well, if, he said if they're selling something... Selling the product. It's different. If... Listen, people edit in this day and age in magazines of and course. things like that. Yes, yes. But if it's blatant that you are saying, hey, I got the results doing this. Like I took this pill. Like we just talked to a friend of ours who said I had clients who like I transformed them the traditional way. They lost a ton of weight, good results, and then went on to their page to say, look at this pill. I took this and got these results and used the results that they actually got from his macro program. Yep. That's just wrong because they're trying to make a buck and sell their pill. Ah, man. Bunch of sellouts these days for the dollar, huh? I hate that. God it's just. Me. I know. It's annoying because it makes people, it makes people not trust us in the fitness industry. It makes us all look like frauds and we're not that way. It does. It does. We're all right, all you guys. Moving on to comment corner. <laughs> Caitlin, Sophia, ooh, get a knock I mean, I wonder if that's a, I can't, sorry, sorry. Gatanakis? It's Greek or something. Yeah, sounds know. like it, kind of. Cool name, but sorry if I butchered it. Holy shit, as an obese person on a new weight loss journey with binge eating disorder, I legit have gotten to a few days of 7,000 calories. We were talking about how much, Whoa. how easy it is to e overeat. Easy. I got off my ADHD meds last week, had a couple of those days. It was actually scary. Next day, got right back on track like I never have before. I've been eating in a calorie deficit for six days, around 2,500, but the consistency has like finally clicked. I'm so glad I started listening to your podcast. I feel way less alone. It goes on. I have it on the screen, but I love this. I love it. I love that we can help you. Thank you so much yes. for listening, Caitlin. Yes. And thank yes, you. thank you for corroborating how easy it is to overeat yes. when you're not paying attention, but kudos to you and good luck to you. Stay on it. Stay consistent stay because you're... Clearly, you're doing a great job, so you just got to keep going, stay consistent. All right, the next comment is from Angela.hm. 
Janine, I'm going to Disneyland in December. I've been tracking macros and have been perfect for many months now, seeing great results, but I'm so afraid I'm going to completely lose control the week of my vacation. Any tips for finding balance while traveling? I'm assuming you wouldn't approve of just letting loose that week with everyone else. Love you guys and your podcast. It's my ritual during every workout. Let me tell you this. If you were going to Disneyland for a day, I would say, you know what? Just enjoy yourself. You're going to get in so many steps yeah. and it's fun to enjoy yourself at Disneyland, but you're going on a week long vacation. Ooh. So the YOLO mindset is a very bad idea yep. on a week long vacation. Super I would bad. guess that you would probably gain about five pounds of body fat with the YOLO mindset on a week long vacation. Not only that, you'll break your discipline. If you've been disciplined, you've been and on track. And it'll be very hard to get back on yes, track. Yes, you'll fall right off the wagon, and it's super hard to get back on track. So while I think I'm all about balance, and I think especially something like Disneyland, it's fun to just enjoy it. This particular thing, you're going to have to be mindful. Super mindful. So if you go into it with them, not the, it's very simple switch. If you don't have that YOLO mindset, instead you have that I'm going to be mindful mindset, It'll make a huge difference, but you're not still over restricting. No. no. It's just you're going to pick and choose the things that are important to you. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yep. Because yep. I've done both. So yes. I can tell you, I always regret, Elaborate. by the way, the YOLO mindset on a vacation because after day like two, I feel gross. Yeah, I know. I we start to it. feel like gross. And then I'm it. like, oh, and then I just, and then it gets worse and worse. Yes. But on the vacations that I like, and mindful, but I still enjoy myself. Like I feel good about myself. And when I do have a little treat on the trip or eat something I enjoy, I feel good about it and I can really enjoy it. Yeah. So like we went to Cabo four years ago. It was a mindful trip for me. Yeah. And I enjoyed myself thoroughly and I saved my biggest indulgent for the last night. I remember we went to Italian food the last yeah, night and I cut it in. Yeah. Yep. But all throughout that. the trip, I had little things that I liked at some restaurants. I'm like, Ooh, the chips and guac look good here. So I'm going to have a serving of chips and guac. If they didn't look like they were worth it, I would skip it. So I was just mindful. And that makes all the difference. The other thing I would recommend start the day doing well, start on a good note, start on a high protein, healthy breakfast. What do we always do when we leave town? What do you always pack? Snacks and bars and, and, and protein stuff. powders and stuff yeah. like that to prepare. So you have at least have something to start the day with. Yeah. So what I would do, I would even do like those pack with you, like those premier protein shakes, the liquid pre-made shakes, because you can yes. pour those in your coffee Yep. And so that you can get in your protein. So you're going to want to pack snacks, pack something like that, like premier protein shakes, but start your day with a good, healthy breakfast. So like for me, say if I was a day in Mexico, we'd get up. Work yeah. out if Always. you can in yes. your hotel gym or something, get up before everyone else yep. and then start the day with like fruit and an, an egg white scramble with some veggies or something yes. on the healthier side, but filling, make sure that you fill and you're not hungry. And then probably I'd have something a little light, but yummy for lunch. And then maybe my indulgence would be like dinner time. I'd have a little bit, something heavier, save share with something what, yeah what i do with my clients is because they like one of my clients likes breakfast and he's always traveling i go dude steak and eggs a winner every time you're gonna order extra side of eggs load up on protein that way you're full for hours that way you're not hungry and you see something like donuts or something you don't get tempted right. to eat the donuts so the gotta, key is to keep yourself full not starve yourself no don't don't you want to keep yourself. yourself full yes do not but starve. on that regard it's a week-long vacation so i think decide which meals are going to be important to you to have your little indulgence and splurge on. I agree with you. You know there. what I mean? Like yes. think like, you know what? Like for me, I'll give you an example, a Disneyland example. I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to Disneyland. I want to be able to pick something from the confectionery because I love their little sweet shops there. I'm like a candy apple or something. I'm going to enjoy something from there. And I'm going to get beignets because I beignets. love beignets. Yes, those are fire. And then that's what would be important to me. Yep. Everything else, I would opt for the healthier option. If we go to Rainforest Cafe or something, I'm going to get yeah. something with protein, grill, shrimp, ap shrimp cocktail appetizer. I'm yeah. going to still enjoy myself. And maybe if the table gets a dessert, I'll have a bite or two of dessert or a bite or two off of your plate to yep. try. But I myself will stick with something healthy. So I, you want to Pick and choose what's important to you. Chances are you've been to Disneyland before or there are certain things you're looking forward to. Don't deprive yourself of those 
moments. It is vacation. And at the end of the day, anything you do gain, you're going to be able to take it off. Or do this. Do this, girl. Before you go there, type up Disneyland and see what restaurants, what food choices are there and find out what you want to eat and look at their menus. So you know ahead of time. So you're not guessing. That's another thing you could do. Yeah. So if you if you want to get that Chances yeah. are she's not going to be in Disneyland every... She's on a week-long vacation. So oh, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I agree with that. But pick what's... But don't restrict too much. Like, pick what's important to you and stick with that. And then yes. everything else, try to just ballpark your overall calorie intake. Don't try to track. I never try to track on vacation. No. But try to ballpark your calorie intake and keep it around maintenance. And just like I said... Anything you do put on, you're going to be able to take off, especially if you didn't do the YOLO mindset because you're not going to be completely off your game. You're going to be able to get right back to it. Yeah. Chances are you might even feel looking forward to getting right back to it because it feels better. Yep. And you will, by having that awareness mindset, you're going to do a lot less damage, if any at all, than if you had the YOLO mindset. So just by having the different mindsets is going to save you pounds right there. Not only that, you know what you're going to do by doing that? What she just said? Discipline. You're going to be able to, you're conquering, you're mastering yourself. You're learning to say no and yes to the right things. That's what you're doing. You're training yourself. So when you go on vacations or other places, like, I got this. I did this before. Oh, I've been there. Our brain's seen this before. Oh, we've already done this. Mm -hmm. No problem. Like us. Yeah. You can go anywhere right now. You could stick us anywhere. We'll figure it out so quick and easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the what I try to teach my clients. Yeah, exactly. All right, Angela, but have fun in Disneyland have and have a beignet for me if it's your thing. Because yes. yum, love beignets. Smacking. All right, moving on. Let's talk about macros. Macros. Macros, because people are scared and they're no, they're listening a lot about it. They're hearing it, but they don't know like why. Why do I need to track them? Listen, hmm. if you can learn to track your macros. It's going to give you the most food freedom you've ever felt in your life. Yes. Without yes. guilt. Yes. Because beyond the shadow of a doubt, if you're tracking that, even if you're eating the treats here and there, if you're hitting your numbers, the treats are guilt free. Yep. Exactly. Because you're still going to get results. Yes. Whereas if you're not tracking, you're always wondering. So when you eat a treat, you're guilty. Yeah. So it actually gives you a better relationship with food right off the bat. Yes. You don't want the food guilt. You want to enjoy it and be like, I'm good. I ate it. I enjoy it. What do you have every night? It's not. Or I have an it's mm -hmm. it. I haven't had an mini. it's it in a minute, actually. I have a mini it's it once a day if I'm craving it and I make it work with them. It's macros. so easy. It's only 170 calories. That's it. It's easy. Uh, but how do you know if you're on the right macros? This is a common question. I think it's important to figure out, are you even on the right ones? It's a very simple answer. Are they working? Are they working? Yeah. If, if you, after no less than two weeks, have any sort of change and you've been hitting your macros, like you've been hitting the targets 100%, not this, I track on five days a week and two days off. No, you're hitting your numbers, your plan numbers for the week for two weeks and you change, then your macros are working. Bingo. There you go. Okay. Just like that. But if you're not hitting your macros then you don't know if your macros are working because you're not actually using them. No, you're still playing the guessing <laughs> you're game. You're still playing the guessing game. You can't guess. Same thing with your paychecks and your bank account and your bills. You can't guess. You got to know. So the only way to know if they're working is to actually follow them. That's the only way. Okay. The, a good set of macros will give you weight loss about, oh, about 0.5 to 1% of body weight weekly. Right here is a big one because many people just think that they can lose three to five pounds in a week. It the just doesn't happen. The assumptions, no, not even. If you do, it's water. That's it. It's water. So 0.5 to 1%. So for me, right now, I'd be like 1.2 pounds per week is the most I would lose. At this weight, though, where I'm at, not even close. It would no. be, I would have to have my calories very low yeah. to have 1% body weight weekly. I'm more like less than 0.5% at this point. Now, if you are larger, if you have 30 or more pounds to lose, that 1% is realistic. Yep. So remember this, weight loss is much slower than you think it is. Much slower. Okay. But if you are losing and you're able to stick to the macros, those macros are working. Time goes fast. Stick with them. You don't want to have more aggressive macros 
to lose faster that you're not going to be able to stick with. Look what my buddy Los tried to do. He's, I want to get more ripped. He's already having grips. I want to get more ripped. I want to drop my calories down a little more. I go, why? You're losing fine, bro. Remember the, yeah. the race between the turtles and the hare? Who won? Yeah. That's it. You're enjoying yourself. It's not yourself. a good idea. No. If Don't you're, switch it. Don't this touch This is the it. biggest mistake people make with their macros. They adjust them when they are still working. Yes. Or they adjust them when they don't know if they're working or not because they haven't been able to stick with them. Exactly. If you're not able to stick with your macros, what do you do? You bump them up. Not a lot, but bump them up. And you keep bumping them up until you can stick with them 100%. Yes, yes you're slowing down your progress. But if you can't stick with them, you're getting zero progress. You have to master it. So if you can, if you slow down your progress and get some progress, that's better than zero progress or a gain because you're going off and on because your macros are so aggressive. You stay on them for five days, go crazy for a day or two, go back on them for five days. That doesn't work. Nope. You have to find macros that you can stick to consistently over a long period of time to see the results that you want. Yeah. So a lot of people make the mistake of setting their calories too low. The other thing is, so say you're on a weight loss journey and your macros are working and they're working for a while. A lot of people think, oh, if I lose weight, should I change my macros? Not necessarily. No, don't do that. If they're still working, you don't have to change them. Why do you want to cheat yourself? Why do you want to cheat yourself out of, of a snack or something you enjoy? Why do you want to do that when it's working? It's not like you said, don't touch it. But here's the thing. When you are on a weight loss journey, especially if you have 30 pounds or more to lose, chances are you're not going to be able to do that in just one phase, in one cut. You're going to need a break where you go, you bump it back up a little bit to what you perceive maintenance to be and you stay there for a month or two and then you go back into your deficit. How do you know when to do that? It's hard because you're on this trajectory. You see the finish line. You lost 25 pounds, but you're struggling now. You're starting, you're hitting a wall. You're feeling like, the wheels are going to fall off the bus because you've been on this deficit for six months or however long. Yeah. So if you're starting to have that feeling, the wheels are going to come off the bus kind of feeling, you're sleeping poor, your energy's low, your mood is bad, you feel deprived, you feel jealous of people who are out and about, or you suddenly are not able to stay consistent when you had been before. I like to say that's what's called biofeedback. Your biofeedback is telling you it's time to take a break. Yep. And it is the best feeling, let me tell you, if you allow yourself to take the break, bump up your calories a little bit, just even if you're not in a full maintenance, but you bump up your calories like two to 300 calories a day, it feels so good. We did get, it. Yes. it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it's a lot. Yes, it is. It's very it makes impactful. It makes a difference. Well, you bumped mine up 200 and I felt better because yeah. I was feeling a little run down and you I was had, pushing hard. You just approached what the biofeedback was telling me. Yes. It's time to, it's time to do a bump up. Yep. So it feels so good to do that and you will feel refreshed and ready and your metabolism will be primed to go at it again in a couple of months. You're not going to undo your progress. You're still structured. You're still tracking your intake. It's not like you stop everything. You're going to have more energy to give your workouts more like... I Shin? felt that, yes. You're feeling the gym. Like you said, we're starting to feel that oomph, like that extra, yes. like, yeah. Because you're going to bump yours up soon. I and I think that's, yes, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm doing that. <laughs> She's getting happy. Soon. And I'm going to do that, the same thing. I'm going to do a, like a 250 calorie per day increase, and I'm excited for it. And I'm going to love it. Yeah, I'm going to do it at the end, at the latest, at the end of December, if not sooner. And I'm going to take a couple of months in the higher calorie range and see how I feel. Watch your strength gains go to the roof, too. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know what, people, believe it or not, it, it, it'll help you build more muscle and it'll lean you out. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to push more weight. By pushing more weight, you put more stress on your muscle. You build muscle. And just remember that before adjusting your macros, I really want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I adhering to the ones I already have 100%? Facts. Because if you cannot adhere to these 100%, what makes you think yeah. dropping them <laughs> is good? That's why when your client wanted to make an adjustment, I yeah. was like, wait a minute, but is he adhering 100% like all seven days? Yeah. A until you get to adhering seven days, there is never a reason to adjust. No, you're right. No, no reason. No. But people always want to make that adjustment. And sometimes I was like, you're having great results, dude. What are you tripping about? We're, this is a, a, a marathon. Remember that. 
Because you They're get not, excited. Well, not a sprint. Yeah. I want to see more. Res- don't worry. It's coming off slowly. Don't look at yourself every damn day. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I work Re- out. That's resist it. Resist the urge to want to speed things up. Yes. You know what it is? It's because we're in this day and age of Amazon. Oh, I get my package in the same day. DoorDash. Oh, it's coming in 30 minutes. Oh, if I mm-hmm. pay extra to come in 15 minutes. Change that mindset. It's a marathon, not a sprint, you guys. The marathon wins the race. So specifically when to adjust your macros. So if you want to know if maybe they're too high is if you're sticking to them hundred percent and you're not getting results. So after two weeks, no results, no change in measurements, no change on the scale, no change in the way your clothes fits, no results. And you were able to stick with them hundred percent. Then you would want to perhaps do an adjustment. Maybe your activity was overestimated. You're not hitting those activity commitments. Cause remember your macros are based on your activity. Maybe you're not hitting your step goal. Yep. There's other factors involved there. Yes. The, the other reason to adjust them is too fast of results. I know it's tempting yes. to want those really fast results. I never can get my clients to adjust when they're fast. They love it when it's fast. But it scares me a little bit because it's not always going to be fast like that. No. For one. And then they're going to think, oh, I'm not getting progress. No, you are. This is just the regular pace. But also, when you lose too quickly, chances are you're probably losing lean muscle more so than body fat. Exactly. That's what you don't want. Do not want that because that's hard to get. Yep. And that's going to impact your ability to maintain the weight loss. Yep. It's going to directly impact your results. And then, like we discussed, biofeedback. So if your biofeedback is poor, you're you're like we went over, if you're tired, moody, all those things, Mm -hmm. it's time for a diet break. And then if you can't stick to them consistently, you keep going off and on, that's a sign that you need to bump them up. The ironic thing is most people that can't stick to their macros and get results, they actually think they need to bump them down. They do. Always. They always want to go down. No, you don't. But it means you need to bump them up. I actually had a client. She had excellent results, a one-on-one client. And she's like, these calories are higher than I've ever been given. And I was a little nervous about them. But it's the first time I've been able to stick to them. And she lost a good amount of weight in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I was like, yep. I'm like, I hear that all the time. I know for people that experience that, they're shocked. First of all, I'm so, always so grateful. I'm like, wow, they trusted me. Because it's really hard to trust a coach when, say, you've always been told in order to lose weight, 1,300 calories. But then you go to someone and they give you 1,450 or 1,550. You're like, no way, I'm going to gain weight. And then they don't because they they trusted it. Because why does that happen? It's not because your body's in starvation, none of that. It's because they were high enough to where you actually felt satisfied. So you were able to stick to them. And I've talked about this at nauseum before, but it's one of those concepts that's hard to understand. So I love to talk about it any opportunity I get. Not only that, you have the energy to do things, to get your steps in, to hit that workout, not be on fumes. When you're training on fumes, it's not fun. It ain't fun. I'm a disciplined person, but I hate, and I could push myself, but when you're on fumes, it's just not as fun as when you have energy. You know what I'm saying? Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Oh, of course. Yeah, for it's sure. way better. You feel more energized. You feel better. And you enjoy feeling, the process. Yes. Yeah, so of feeling not- run down and hungry and thinking about food. And you're tired and moody. You're like, I'm just going through the motions. Because you see people going through the motions at the gym all the time. That means they're either malnourished or their nutrition's not on point. Something's mm-hmm. off. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to cover in terms of macros is macros. What are the macros? What am I talking about? I'm talking yeah, about macros? protein, fats, and carbs that equal your total calories, right? But when it comes to tracking them, because of the magic of mathematics and how it works, all you actually need to do is hit your protein target and stay within your calorie limit. That's it. Your fats and carbs will land based off of your nutrition style. Yep. So maybe usually for me, I am a I eat balanced. So I end up with about 40% carbs, uh, 40% protein right now, and 30% fats. That's where I and that's where I land naturally because it's the style of eating. I'm balanced. I try to always have a carb, a fat, a protein in my meals. Yeah. Protein heavy. So that's where I land, but I don't track carbs and fats. They just naturally make up the rest of the equation. So to simplify macros, to demystify the process, it's so much easier for my clients. It's just not necessary for you to fixate on the fats and the carbs. They will naturally fall out of the equation. Just trust me, count your protein, hit that target and stay within your calorie limit and you will have 
amazing result. Sounds like me in the beginning. I asked you, like, but babe, don't I have to watch my carbs and fats? They're like, no, just worry about your protein goal and don't go over your calories. I was, but no, just hit your protein goal, worry about your calories. So I didn't say my clients. Like, no, don't worry about your calories. Because cal- they do <laughs> you know, worry. They, yeah. You know what I get asked in the gym? Guys that ask me, how many carbs are you taking in? Oh, uh, you're asking the wrong question, homie. Carbs don't build muscle. You should be asking me how many protein grams am I taking in? What are my calories? That's the right question. So I'll give you guys an example. I do not pay attention to my carb numbers or fats or, oh my gosh, am I hitting these numbers? But it just naturally falls. So my last full day of tracking, I hit 1,409 calories, 134 grams of protein. My protein goal was 130 grams. My calories was 1,400. So I went over a little bit on calories, Mm, but I went over on my protein goal. Fine. Yep. How the graph ended up, and I'll actually put this up on the screen, is yes. it ended up being 36% protein, 31% carbs, 32% fat. So my carbs were a little lower than normal because I probably had a lower carb dinner or whatever, but my fats made up the difference. My fats were a little higher. Didn't matter. They're both fuel sources. See? Totally fine. But people, are they want to complicate it. It's not that complicated, you guys. It's simple. And then when you figure out, you're like, oh, I get it. Yes, mm-hmm. it's like a bank account. Your bank account, you understand? $2,000 a day, seven days a week, $14,000. Spend as you will, but hit your protein goal. It's not complicated, man. Yeah, you don't have to complicate it. But it people want to complicate it. more simple. And hitting that protein goal tends to be the most challenging part for people. Yes. So what I recommend is plan your day according to hitting your protein goal. And make sure you watch her hacks. She puts it on all of her social media, Mm -hmm. on her YouTube protein hacks to bump up that protein. We use Baya yogurt and protein powders because it helps. Because, yes, a lot of times we can't eat steak and chicken and eggs all day long. You're so full. That's hard to do. So we use protein hacks. I like a good mixture. I get some of my protein from a protein bar, some from protein powder, some from egg whites, some from a lean protein source, some from Faye, some from dairy. comes everywhere. The unique benefit of getting your protein from a lot of those types of sources animal proteins is you're going to get a different amino acid profile with each protein. So you're really getting a good combination of all of those amino acids. Amino acids are essential. It's it's like the Legos to build your muscles without the Legos. Yes. Even if you're lifting weights, you're not going to be able to build the muscle. Yes. Think about that. Think about every time you eat protein. So you need to satisfy that protein target so that when your body goes and is doing the little repairs to the muscle, it has the Legos to select from. Yes, it does. Because otherwise, when it does repair the muscle from that great workout you just did, if you don't have the protein in there, guess what? It's just going to repair back even smaller than it was before, if not maybe the same size or even smaller. If it has the Legos, guess what? When you tear those muscle fibers during your workout, because that's what's happening, little micro tears, it grabs the Legos to put the muscle back together. And what happens? The muscle gets put back together ever so slightly bigger. And that is how you grow your muscle. You got to feed it. I always say this. You got to feed the machine. You got to feed the muscles. You, they got to eat. You yeah. need to feed them, not starve them. And that's why when it comes to protein, I like to target grams, not pay attention to the percentage of protein. Because if you're just like, oh, I'm just trying to hit 30% protein. But no. what if you only decide you only want to eat 1,000 calories? That's not enough protein. Nope. So I listen, if you want to, if you're full because the protein has you full and you can't even get more calories in because a lot of times I have newer clients tend to feel that way because they're not used to that feeling from a lot of protein. That's fine as long as you hit the protein goal. Exactly. But by grams, not percentage. So I always give them grams, minimum number of grams and target grams. So look, I want you to get 125, but at the very minimum, you better be getting 110. Yes. Like I give both of those numbers. Those numbers need to be met. So figure it out. Plan accordingly. It takes some planning to get the protein in. And I always tell my clients, too, if you're going to go over your, your calories, please go over with protein. I ain't going to get mad at you. If, you, if you're going to go over, if you happen to go over. Like mm-hmm. you went over nine calories, no big deal. Sometimes even I'll no, go that's... over 100 calories, but I make sure it's protein. Yeah. That's it. Like I have my clients have a range. So nine calories is yeah negligible yeah. I, I like there's like maybe a 50 to 75 calorie range that's totally normal yeah we're not bodybuilding here competing it's not competition diet but the times in my where i struggle to stay in my deficit and i'm like oh, i'm just st- still hungry but am i really hungry i'm really hungry if i'm willing to go over with protein if i want to go over with a bag of chips i'm not hungry i'm having nope. a craving Thanks. bingo all right so yes. hopefully we demystified macros for you guys a little yes. bit today thank you so much for 